All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back, and uh, bro, she's well, just beating these people up. Yeah, he's watching some Oscar. And watching some Oscar magic. Yeah, she's, that's, that's what she does. Uh, what you just said was a pretty accurate description of what she does. <laughs> Basically, not, yeah. So, uh, uh, unfortunately, Andrew has to leave in about like ten some minutes. Yeah, or a little less. But uh, this is one thing we'll talk about real quick. Uh, last night was a premiere of the ESPN Thirty for Thirty documentary, The Nature Boy. Rick. About Ric Flair, you know, it's a big deal. I mean, ESPN was posting stuff on their social media. Like, there was this one, like, wrestling nickname generator. They were posting stuff about, like, Ric and everything. Mm-hmm. And Ric Flair was on ESPN, like, all day on all the shows, whether it was, he was on, I think he was on, like, Sports Nation, First Take. He was on a highly questionable, just, like, every show on ESPN's mm-hmm. daily lineup he was on. So it was like, it was like Ric Flair Day in Bristol, or in LA, whatever, wherever he was. It was Ric Flair Day in ESPN, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Now, Unfortunately, sorry people. I saw some of it, but I didn't see the entire documentary because you know. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't see it. I I, I completely forgot. And I don't yeah. know why. Um, I usually forget the thirty for thirties, but I that I'm definitely gonna watch it. You know, yeah. just watch it online through Verizon or whatever. Yeah, and I, I recorded it, so I can watch it anyway. I'm definitely gonna watch it, and then we will talk about it on our podcast tomorrow. Yes, the heel turn podcast. I mean, I don't think it matters whether we, whether it's tomorrow because it's not like they're gonna get here tomorrow. You know, just, we're gonna record. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're gonna record it tomorrow, but it will be released, and you will see it. Yeah, shortly. Well, listen, you know, see podcast, but, but yeah, you know, um, ESPN is. I just want to talk about the whole relationship between ESPN and the WWE because this mm-hmm. started, I think, earlier this year, or last year, where they started talking about the WWE. They had Jonathan Coachman, like Jonathan Coachman, he left the WWE yeah. and joined ESPN to talk about like sports. When I when I saw him on ESPN, I was like, what? <laughs> I was so confused. I was happy. I was like, okay. Yeah, good for him. He became, he, he was like this mm-hmm. extremely hated, like, WWE character. Oh, his yeah. commentary, his managing. His commentary, nah. His managing, I'll, I'll take, but his commentary, yeah. nah, bro. Yeah, yeah. So, but honestly, I, I'm not going to say look up. That's kind of strong. But I kind of want to have, like, like, that kind of career path. That'd be cool mm-hmm. to go from being, like, a WWE character personality to being an actual sports broadcaster. Mm-hmm. Actually, I don't know if he's still at ESPN, but. You know, if he he was there for he was there, yeah. I, I think so. I've I've seen him less and less though. Yeah, he used to be the one I would interview wrestlers after on SmackDown and stuff, and yeah. sometimes come in as guests. And I've at first I was a little hesitant because I I do also like pro sports, not mm-hmm. just wrestling, of course. But mm-hmm. I always thought that the WWE was best when it was in a relative bubble, not like you know nobody should know about it, but like. It should just keep itself within itself, if that makes any sense. And going on ESPN, I think people would be like, oh, why are you putting all this fake stuff on ESPN? It's for real sports. Mm-hmm. That's, that's a, was, that, was that impression good? Of, <laughs> I don't know who that's supposed to be impression of. People watch Barstool. I, I, I watch Barstool. I know you do. That's exactly what I <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <It's not laughs> weird. I don't watch yeah, Barstool. I, I understand what you mean. Uh, Coachman, he was all right. Like, it's good to see that he's doing something. You just talked about Scott Hall and and Kevin Nash and, mm-hmm. and um, Eric Bischoff doing a show, and nobody come comes to watch. And that's pr- that's a problem with with sports in general, is because once you stop doing the sport or stop wrestling, then the cash stops flowing. Unless you mm-hmm. are John Cena, you are Stone Cold, you are The Rock. Well, I mean, they have different they have different avenues, so you have to do yeah. something else on the side. And that's why people might hate John Cena for it, but it's the smartest thing to do because once you're done wrestling, like you will make some money from it but not enough to, to sustain you and your lifestyle and that's what Ric Flair is going to talk about like his lifestyle and everything that he yeah. did in the WWE when he was there and like he actually lived the stuff that he that was, talked about yeah I was just about to say that but the one part that I did see was he talked about how spoiler he, alert yeah, a little bit I mean he said this before how everything he said in his promos he lived it and then a lot like there was a, somebody that he talked to I forgot where he was from they compared him to Hulk Hogan now they were wrestling around the same time, mm-hmm. you know. It was Hulk Hogan, WWE, Ric Flair, WCW. They were like the mm-hmm. top. People wanted to see a Hulk Hogan Ric Flair dream match, but they never got it at that time. But uh, yeah. many people said that you know Hulk Hogan was phony, which it, it proved to be because Hulk Hogan's not that like you know I, I role model. Like Hulk Hogan. Yeah, me, me neither. I was never a big fan. And Ric Flair's also just a better wrestler. Mm-hmm. But you know, Ric Flair actually lived this game, and whether you liked liked it or not, he lived it. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, one thing I actually found interesting, the one one small part that I did see was they actually interviewed Snoop Dogg, and Snoop actually said that Ric Flair was a huge inspiration on like, like hip hop, 
Yeah, yeah. Because I, black people <laughs> love Ric Flair. Yeah. I see. I like Ric Flair, but I don't like love him. Love him like that. Like I never, I never understood it. But every single time I heard African American or just mentioned Ric Flair, like um, yeah. what's it called? Metro Boom and Twenty One Savage and Offset. They put out a mixtape. They have a song called Ric Flair Drip <laughs> on it. Like I've never understood the fascination with black I people and Ric Flair. I don't understand it. But like I'll accept. But, but, I mean, I guess the cl- the what he's talking about matches some somewhat yeah. with how the lifestyle like, rappers live I, I, I was I was just interested too because I hear a lot of like in hip hop songs you sometimes hear wrestling references you'll hear Hulk Hogan a lot just because he's big you know I heard a mis- reference to Mr. Perfect before I hear a lot of references to Stone Cold Steve Austin but no wrestler has more references hip hop references than Ric Flair nope because what's hip hop about being flashy bragging about how much you how much money you make be bragging about how much how many women you get that's what Ric Flair did, and that's what hip hop is. Ric Flair did it in the late seventies and early to mid eighties. Well, throughout his whole career, really. Mm-hmm. And that's what hip hop is. No, I might even say that's what hip hop is now. That's what hip hop pretty much has been for a long time. So that's true. Hip hop has always been like that. It's just yeah. the way you say it has changed. Now it's yeah. more simple, and like you could just say whatever you want. But yeah. before, like you had, you said it, but you you had like a dope verse to it. Yeah, like, like you'd have to actually have good, you know. Rhyme schemes, I guess you'd say. Yeah, but I gotta get out of here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm All sorry right. that I could not stick around nah, longer. No, nah, no, need to apologize. We all responsible. Take over school. There's a lot of stuff that I've learned about schools going on. So I'm, I'm yeah. I'll see y'all next week, though. Yeah, take care of that business. Uh, yeah. Now I could do this last thing by myself, but I'm a little tired. Not tired, but I'm just gotta. I just don't feel like you know what. If you listen to our podcast, we'll go more in depth. Listen to our podcast, uh, yes. the Heel Turn Podcast, coming soon. <laughs> Definitely coming soon. We're working on it. We're speaking tomorrow with the guy. We're gonna have our own SoundCloud uh, SoundCloud page. Yes. Where we're gonna post all all our episodes one, two. I think we're at three. Yeah. Tomorrow's gonna be four. Yeah, we've done so three episodes. We're gonna so do. We're gonna do all that. So it's definitely coming shortly. Yes. All right. So uh, I'm just gonna end it right here. Uh, to the little Andrew. I don't know why I said that. Uh, I am Rob Bias and. That is it for our abbreviated version of the count out. So I hope all of you have a fantastic week, a fantastic weekend, and tune in. Well, not tune in, but watch out for the Heel Turn podcast. We'll be recording it tomorrow, and we will be talking about the Ric Flair documentary, and we'll also go into depth about post the the career post wrestling for a lot or post WWE WCW for a lot of these wrestlers. So. Thank you all for listening, and that is the bottom line because I said so.